Hi, good evening everybody. I wanted to uh, discuss the southern border crisis. Uh, apparently a large number of the audience has really reacted to my reporting on that. So I wanted to give you an update and I wanted to give you an overview. Back in 2014, the United States had declared a crisis at the border. And how did they address it really depends on the president that was in charge. So if we're talking about 2014, then we're talking about President Obama and Vice President Biden. Now, there has always been a lot of talk that president that under the President Trump administration, a lot of the immigrants and children of the immigrants were put in cages. But the reality is that that happened under the Obama administration. Now, these asylum seekers, right? This is the legal term that is used. For any refugees, right, that are trying to find sanctuary in a foreign country other than their own. However, what's happening is that a lot of these refugees and we'll call them refugees because at, at this point, since they're not entering the United States illegally, we can't call them illegal aliens and we can't call them the undocumented. But I'll give you an idea what's going on. So what will happen is that these refugees will, you know, from let's say that they're in Central America and they cross into, Mex into Mexico. Well... According to a 16th, 2019 Supreme Court decision to uphold a law that provided that the refugee leaving their country and passing to another country must seek sanctuary in that country. So, again, for example, if they're leaving Central America and they cross into Mexico, then they have to seek refuge there or sanctuary. But what's happening is that they're passing through Mexico on their way to the United States. And once they enter the United States, they become undocumented or illegal aliens. So, again, the crisis has not ended. As a matter of fact, according to Arizona, the uh, illegal alien invasion, okay, because that's what it is, has gone up. 2,400%. So what's happening is 10,000 or more plus are crossing the border in Yuma, Arizona and all along uh, Texas, especially in the areas where the wall on which under President Trump that was being built and canceled by current President Biden had uh, ceased. Governor Doug Ducey painting an ominous picture of the situation at the border. The U.S. Border Patrol is overwhelmed. Local law enforcement and mayors are calling out for help. The governor's plan, send 250 National Guard troops to border communities. They'll monitor law enforcement cameras, maintain border cameras, and monitor trends in smuggling corridors. But the Biden administration, the governor says, has rebuffed its offer of guard support. In any case, what the Biden administration is now doing is they're allowing the illegal aliens to cross through. And when they end up in the custody, not of ICE, but of the Border Patrol agents, the Border Patrol agency as a whole is being told not to deport them. They're being flown into other states and released. But not only are they being released, they're given debit cards which is basically your tax dollars on a debit card so that they can be set free and you know they can spend the money or our tax dollars. You're not being told this, and this is something that uh, you really need to look up and you need to follow very closely. Again, why the Biden administration and the Democratic Party decided to allow this invasion to happen depends on what you believe.
New York has basically written into law or legislated into law that the 800,000 non-U.S. citizens, that includes the undocumented, illegal aliens, foreigners that are here on visa, are going to be allowed to vote. And this is very unprecedented because the Constitution has given this right to U.S. citizens only to vote. when we talk about this humanitarian crisis. Reducing the crisis requires a combination of political and advocacy, policy changes, but not policy changes that say, okay, we're gonna grant amnesty. We're not a country in isolation. We are a country of laws. And the things that we need to consider is the people of the United States, the people that already live here. Can we afford as a nation to take in refugees that just crossed the border? There is a process, there is a reasoning behind why people are processed through the immigration program. That's why we have policies in place. One is that we capture information about those that are coming in. And we ensure that those that are coming in are at least related Okay, not that a coyote has two children that are not related to that person. Okay, the other thing is that it becomes a major crisis when you have humanitarian support or advocacy groups that are just standing there and, and advocating, yeah, let them in, let them in, without a process of vetting the individuals that are coming in. Obviously, we're not going to vet children because... You know, they're, they're young, all right? Their lives have just begun. But there are adults that need to be vetted because what's happening is that some countries are literally emptying out their prisons and allowing these criminals, murderers, rapists, just like President Trump said. He, he wasn't designating one group, but this is a fact, okay? This is something that, you know, the advocacy groups... And politicians on the left are ignoring that the uh, that the United States is becoming a dumping ground for what other countries are clearly labeling as undesirables. You know, we we can no longer support the Biden administration open borders policy. We cannot support it because our tax dollars are being funneled into advocacy groups, into the politicians' caucus, so that we can just invite anybody that wants to come in here. And there is this distorted view that not allowing people to come in here makes us racist but that's not that's not the case why have immigration policies if then on the other hand you're going to turn around and say that we're racist for not allowing people to come in here we do that's why we have an immigration policy and and it isn't as though the policy is very strict all right we we definitely want people to immigrate to the united states to be successful but we don't want criminals to immigrate to the United States so they can become successful. Because of, as of right now, because of this open borders policy, the amount of fentanyl that is entering the country is enough for every person in the United States to be killed seven times over. Could you imagine that? Fentanyl has, has been linked to a lot of deaths in the United States, not because of COVID, but drug-related deaths. And, uh, and when I say every person, you as an individual, just you, there's enough fentanyl to kill you seven times, just you. So then when you start looking at the bigger picture as to all the people in the United States can be killed seven times over, that is an astronomical number, and it's not made up. It's actually been reported.
I guess my problem with this whole thing is that why is it that the politicians in the United States feel that we're the only country that needs to help everybody who's in need? Why? Why does it fall on us? Well, the politicians will say it's because this is the land of the free. But that is not the reason why they do it, because there's money involved. And that money doesn't come from a politician. Politicians don't have money. Sure, they have a salary, because taxpayer pay their salaries. And our taxes are used and funneled to different advocacy groups under the guise of humanitarian aid, security aid. But the, but the truth is, if this was de being done properly, why is it that the left, Democratic left, and the Biden administration feel that it's necessary to grant amnesty and forego the immigration policy? There are laws out there for people that drive cars, right? So you can't drive a car without a license or get social services without an identification. But yet this administration feels or sees fit to just give random illegal and undocumented aliens without vetting them, without knowing where they come from, what they've done, if they're sick. And, and that's another point that I've neglected to bring up, is why aren't we vetting them for COVID, right? So if COVID is such a big thing in this country, right? My message to unvaccinated Americans is this. What more is there to wait for? Why aren't they being tested? What, because we don't have enough kits? So that's a reason, okay, we don't have kits, so we're gonna have to let them go. No, it doesn't work that way. So you as a US citizen, you as a patriot, you as a naturalized citizen who has worked hard to be a contributor in this country, need to look at what's gonna happen in the midterm elections in November and how are you gonna vote? Because this country is, we're suffering from inflation. Uh, there are a lot of cities that if you go to the markets, there's no food. And yet, the Biden administration wants us to tighten our belts. All right, they want us to tighten our belts, but continue to pay taxes, continue to pay the salaries of these politicians that are doing nothing for us that are laughing at us, that have enslaved us, is basically what's happening here. And it's not fair. It is a disaster. And something needs to be done. So again, I understand that there are asylum seekers. But if there are asylum seekers, why do you have to cross the border illegally to seek asylum. Why? Because more than likely, the reason is that you were kicked out of your country for something that you did wrong. Plain and simple. Plain and simple. Those women and children trying to come here with nothing but the shirts on their back to create an opportunity and to pr provide for this nation are acting more in an American tradition.